tonight. Furious weather. Rescue operations step up and hundreds evacuated as Typhoon Yagi brings deadly floods to Thailand. Gaza attacks. Israeli strike devastates occupied West Bank in Gaza, killing six. UN condemns Israel for targeting civilians. Racing ahead. Harris gains momentum as polls show. The Democratic candidate bests up Trump in his historical presidential showdown. And the art of healing. A new method uses the power of creativity to help freedom fighters struggling to overcome mental and physical challenges in a revolutionary art. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than a World News Tonight. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. With the latest updates across the globe for this Thursday, I'm Amasha Fernando. And let's take a look at the latest updates on the super typhoon Yagi. Causing devastation across Vietnam, Typhoon Yagi continues to hammer Thailand with gales and torrential rain, leaving parts of northern Thailand severely flooded. Thailand deployed military special forces in the northern province of Chiang Rai today after flooding maroon thousands that authorities are trying to reach with boats and helicopters. At least 33 people have died across Thailand since mid-August from a spate of rain-related incidents, including landslides with nine fatalities this week in two northern provinces hit by adverse weather brought by Typhoon Yagi, according to the government. Yagi, the strongest storm hit to Asia this year, has killed at least 197 people in Vietnam, where it made landfall on Saturday and flooded parts of the capital city Hanoi. In Thailand's northmost province of Chiang Rai, floodwaters have started receding from some areas of the hard-hit Mai Sai district, but many riverside settlements are still flooded. Pope Francis urged political leaders in Singapore to seek fair wages for the country's lower-paid foreign workers. In the final leg of an ambitious 12-day tour across Southeast Asia and Oceania, the pontiff singled out concern for Singapore's rapidly aging population and its migrant workforce. Pope Francis was welcomed by Singapore's president and government officials on the final leg of his trip through Southeast Asia and Oceania. During his visit, he praised Singapore's economic development as a testament to human ingenuity, but urged the city-state to look after the weakest as well. The pontiff called especially for dignified pay and conditions for migrant workers who helped build Singapore into a global financial powerhouse. Francis's visit will include a speech to political authorities and a mass at Singapore's national stadium, which the Vatican expects to draw around 55,000 people. The Pope will also hold private meetings with Singapore's President and Prime Minister. For many Catholics in Singapore, this will be their first time seeing a Pope. The last Pope to visit was John Paul II in 1986. Prior to Singapore, Francis visited Timor-Leste, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. The latest on the war in Gaza now. Five Palestinians have been killed in an Israeli airstrike in the north of the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Red Crescent said that a drone had targeted a group of five young men near a mosque in the city of Jubas at dawn yesterday. Israeli forces conducted fresh raids in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday, and Palestinian emergency services said an airstrike in the city of Tubas killed five people. The Israeli military confirmed the strike, which it said hit an armed militant group, but gave no details. Israeli soldiers were seen patrolling the streets of Tubas. Entrances and exits from the city were sealed off. Cell phone video showed military trucks and bulldozers rolling in. The security forces have been conducting a series of operations in the northern West Bank for the past two weeks, with extended raids in Tubas, Janine and Tulkarm. All three cities have a heavy presence of armed factions, including Hamas, Islamic Jihad and Fatah. In a separate incident in the city of Tulkarm, the Israeli military said troops backed by police and intelligence services killed an armed militant. 
Violence has surged in the West Bank since the start of the war in Gaza. More than 680 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank since the Hamas-led attack on Israel on October 7th. In the same period, Israel's domestic security agency says about 40 Israeli troops and civilians have been killed in attacks by Palestinians or in clashes with fighters. On Wednesday, a Palestinian allegedly crashed this fuel truck into a bus stop near a Jewish settlement, critically wounding one Israeli. The Israeli army said the suspect driving the vehicle was shot and killed by security forces at the scene. Meanwhile, North Korea resumed firing ballistic missiles in the morning for the first time in over two months. This comes less than 24 hours after another round of trash-carrying balloons was sent across the border. North Korea on Thursday morning fired multiple short-range ballistic missiles towards the East Sea. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said they are analyzing the types and range of the missiles launched from the Pyongyang area. It added that the missiles flew approximately 360 kilometers before landing in the East Sea. The JCS is on high alert for potential additional launches and is sharing relevant information with the U.S. and Japan. The last time the North fired a ballistic missile was on July 1st, which Pyongyang said were successful test launches of a new type of tactical ballistic missiles. The Joint Chiefs of Staff emphasized that North Korea's missile launch is a clear provocative act that seriously threatens the peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. While condemning it, it added that the South Korea military will continue to closely monitor the regime's activities under the ROK-U.S. Joint Defense Agreement. An official at the Unification Ministry also said the launch violates U.N. Security Council resolutions and stated that at a time of urgent recovery from the flood damage, the provocations demonstrate the falsehood of the regime's propaganda. North Korea's launch of ballistic missiles follows the sending of more trash-carrying balloons toward the south on Wednesday evening. However, most of those balloons were carried by the wind back north of the military demarcation line. An official at the Defense Ministry noted that it's too early to tell if the launch of trash-carrying balloons and short-range ballistic missiles at the same time implies a complex provocation by the north due to the smaller number of balloons. However, speculation is rising that it could hint at a return to provocations against the south after balloons were last sent for five consecutive days from September 4th until the 8th. Watchers also say the North may increase provocations ahead of the U.S. presidential elections in November. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now, flash polls immediately following the U.S. presidential debate on Tuesday suggest that more people think Kamala Harris performed better. Donald Trump, however, insists that he won the debate, but has shown little interest in doing a second one. Following Tuesday's U.S. presidential debate between Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris and former President and Republican candidate Donald Trump, polls across the U.S. show that more Americans think Harris won the debate. CNN's flash poll results show that 63 percent of registered voters think Harris outperformed Trump. This is echoed by analysis from the American news outlet The Hill, which found that 49.4 percent of Americans support Harris, while 45.8 percent support Trump. After the debate, pop music artist Taylor Swift announced her endorsement of Harris, saying Harris fights for the rights and causes that Swift believes need a warrior to champion them. However, Trump asserted that he won and that he is looking at having other debates, but without set plans. You know, when you win, you don't really necessarily have to do it a second time. So we'll see. But uh, we had a, uh, I thought we had a great debate last night. Tuesday's debate on ABC attracted 57.5 million television viewers across seven TV networks, according to preliminary Nielsen data on Wednesday. This tops the June debate between Trump and then-candidate President Joe Biden. On the day after the debate, the two candidates both attended a September 11 memorial event and exchanged a handshake. Seven weeks remain until voting day. It's expected the candidates will focus on some seven swing states in the country, including Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. 
Harris will likely focus on issues such as women's rights to abortion, as well as working with President Biden to release hostages in the Israel-Hamas war, while Trump will likely focus on blaming Harris for the lack of border control and economic issues including inflation under the Biden administration. in Australia now, police arrested 33 protesters amidst fiery anti-war protests in Melbourne. Authorities said about 1,200 people had taken part in the demonstration targeting the Land Forces International Land Defence Exposition, many of whom sported Palestinian flags and sang pro-Palestinian chants. Anti-war protesters and police clash outside a defence exhibition in Australia's second largest city of Melbourne, with police using sponge grenades, flashbang devices and irritant sprays to control parts of the hostile crowd. Two dozen police officers required medical treatment and 33 people had been arrested for offences. The police said that two dozen police officers required medical treatment and 33 people had been arrested for offences including assaulting, obstructing or hindering police, arson and blocking roads. Police had anticipated unrest ahead of the event, which is expected to draw over 1,000 corporations from 31 countries in the coming days. The expo, which is not open to the public, brings together military, defence, government, scientific and industry delegations from around the world. Local media reported that military artillery, trucks and semi-automatic weapons have been on display during the convention. Activists had said that they were protesting as they claim many of the weapons on the show have been used by Israeli forces in Gaza. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese condemned the violence, saying that the Australians had a right to protest but had to do so in a peaceful manner. Neighbouring countries are expressing criticism following Germany's decision to set up temporary controls on all of its land's borders. Poland has deemed Germany's decision to implement border controls unacceptable, while Austria has announced that it will not accept any migrants who are turned back. Neighbouring countries are expressing criticism following Germany's decision to set up temporary controls at all of its land borders. The decision, which expanded checks already in place at some borders, aims to curb irregular migration, according to German Interior Minister Nancy Faeser. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk said the action was unacceptable from the Polish point of view, adding that the decision means the suspension of the Schengen Zone on a large scale. Austria's Interior Minister Gernhard Karner said Germany's decision was illegal and that Austria would not accept migrants rejected by Germany. However, he also said he was glad that Germany was addressing what he said was the major problem of illegal migration in Europe. Es ist nicht zu akzeptieren, wenn illegale Dinge passieren. Wir leben in einem Rechtsstaat und wenn Deutschland dies plant, dann ist das illegal in dieser Art und Weise. Daher werden wir keinen annehmen, keinen zurücknehmen. Hier gibt es null Spielraum. The temporary controls at all German borders sparked a fierce debate about whether refugees could be turned back. Discussion is dominating German political discourse about asylum and migration policy. And finally tonight, Art therapy is proved to be especially useful for people struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder. The conditions affect many people, especially those who served in war, and the recent discovery may help veterans overcome trauma and go back to living normal and happier. Using the power of art, these veterans are working through challenges both mental and physical. Navy veteran Einar Jolson told KCCI News in Iowa that carving and painting played a big role in helping him with stress and the pain of recovering from surgery. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, about 7% of veterans have PTSD. That number jumps to 29% for troops who served in Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. As a recreational therapist, Teresa Johnson uses art to help veterans break through their difficulties. She says simply by finishing a project with encouragement and support, Wendy Cornelius says art has helped her cope with anxiety and depression. While the appreciation of art is subjective, these veterans show there can be beauty in working through pain. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest updates across the globe. 
Stay tuned as Nadi Balasuria will join you next with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching and have a good night.